If you have solar panels on your house or are considering getting solar and you are wondering what the best type of air conditioner for a home with solar is, then you've come to the right place because we're going to answer that question and more in this video. And at the end of this video, there'll be a link to another video that talks about one of our favorite air conditioners on the market right now. And that air conditioner happens to be a home that pairs very well with a solar powered house. So first off, when it comes to picking out an air conditioner for your home, the best way to determine what type of furnace or a you should get is a longer process we cover in another video so if you're not subscribed to the channel already make sure you do so because we put out weekly content on how to get the best HVAC for your home and we cover that in another video but I'll touch on that briefly in this video so that you at least have a general understanding of what things you should take into consideration when picking out new heating and air conditioning equipment for your home it's a combination of analyzing number one the cost of the equipment number two the time cost savings equation meaning how long it will take you to break even on the price difference between the most efficient equipment and the least efficient equipment. Number three, your use case and climate, meaning what temperature do you like to keep it in your home in relation to your climate. And number four, that brings all of these together, is how long you plan on being in the home. Because if you plan on living in the house for a while, then our recommendation is to always get the nicest equipment that you can afford because it will pay for itself in the long run and you will also be more comfortable in the process. So that being said, let's talk specifically about the best types of equipment for a system with solar panels. Now, generally speaking, the types of equipment we recommend for homes with solar are inverters. And the reason is because they have a very low amp draw on startup and they accomplish this with what's called a variable speed compressor, which means that when it first starts up, it pulls very little power and throughout the day, depending on the demand for cooling, it will ramp up and down according to the demand. Now, the benefit of an inverter type of air conditioning system and variable speed compressor is that number one, it is much more efficient. Think of it like this. Imagine if your car only could go zero miles an hour or 60 miles an hour. Driving down the street, you would go from zero to 60 in a split second, and it would be the jerkiest, most uncomfortable ride ever. But what if you had a car that could go zero miles an hour and then ramp up to five miles or 10 miles an hour? And you might be thinking, well, that's exactly what my car does now. And I would agree with you, but your AC probably doesn't unless you already have an inverter with a variable speed compressor. Now you might be thinking, okay, that's great. But if I have solar, why does it matter what type of air conditioner I have? Now, the short answer is that technically it doesn't if you are connected to the grid because what you have most likely is what's called net metering. Now, net metering means that the utility company takes a look at how much power you use in a month and how much electricity your solar panel is generated. And if you generated more power than you consumed, then they would cut you a check for the difference. Or if you consumed more power than you produce from your solar panels, then you would simply pay them the difference. Now, in this instance, technically the only reason you want the most efficient AC possible, which is always going to be an inverter or variable speed system, is so that you're consuming as little power as possible and therefore offsetting 100% of your usage with energy produced by your solar panels. However, if you are not in a situation where you have net metering or you're penalized for demand charges for using more electricity during peak usage hours, for example, then you could find yourself in a situation where even though you offset all of your solar power with solar, you could still be penalized by the utility company and end up getting a bill. But the other time that it absolutely makes sense to get an inverter driven AC is when you are off the grid or on battery backup like a test Tesla Powerwall, for example. And the reason is, is because typically in the summer, your air conditioner is your largest single consumer of electricity in your home. But inverters function differently from traditional stage or multi-stage air conditioners in that on startup, they pull a fraction of the power by comparison. Now, if it sounds like I'm speaking gibberish to you and you just want to know what models or brands of air conditioners you should buy, I'll give you a handful of brands and models to choose from so you have a reference point of what a variable speed air conditioner is when you talk to your contractor. And when you talk to your contractor, you can ask them about one of these models depending on what brands they sell. So let's start with Daikin because we are a Daikin dealer. And after you finish watching this, there's another video on our channel called The Truth About Brands that you should watch if you haven't done so already. And I'll link that in the description for you. And it explains why we sell Daikin, even though there are other brands out there that are of comparable quality. The Daikin inverter systems that would work well in a house with 
solar is any of their mini split systems. Now this includes the MXS and MXL series, the 19 series, the 17 series, the Aurora. I could literally go on and on as there are a ton of different models, but almost any ductless mini split that Daikin makes for the most part is going to be an inverter. But if you're used to a traditional split system, which is what we have a lot of in the United States, I would recommend either VRV Life, the DX9, the DZ9, or the Daikin Fit. And at the end of this video, there'll be a link to one of our favorite systems that I referenced earlier, and that's the Daikin Fit. Now, the Daikin Fit is a great fit for the Colorado market especially, although it does work well in other areas, but you wanna ask your local contractor because depending on your specific climate, this will vary from region to region. But when you watch that video, you will see why we love it, and it explains inverters in a very simple to understand way. Now, the Daikin model numbers I just referenced all have a variable speed compressor and have a very low amp draw on startup, which is what makes them an excellent fit for a solar system that is on solar. And this is especially true if the system has battery backup like a Tesla Powerwall, for example. The reason is because if you have a battery backup, any of the inverter systems don't pull very much power on startup, will, and they will do a good job maximizing the life of your batteries from a standpoint of battery life, as well as wear and tear on the batteries in terms of how long they last. So now I'll touch on some other brands really quickly, just so you have a list of model numbers that you can ask your contractor about. We do not sell any of these brands currently, but they have similar technology and are very efficient. So let's start with Train. Now Train has the X XV18 or the XV20i. Now this is not as quiet as the Daikin models I mentioned, but it is one of their inverter products that will still ramp up and down slowly and therefore efficiently, and it's still pretty quiet. Lennox has the EL18XCV. This is another variable speed compressor system. American Standard has its AccuComfort Variable Speed Platinum 20 that competes with these same specs, and Carrier makes the Infinity 26. Now, this is marketed as a variable speed compressor. However, if you read the fine print, it does say that it starts off at 25% capacity on startup, whereas some of the other systems I mentioned have a lower turndown ratio defined as width of operational capacity, meaning they can ramp up or down from as little as five or 10% capacity, which is the case for the Daikin models I mentioned earlier. So hopefully you found that information helpful. And if you did, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And if you happen to be in the Denver Metro or Colorado Springs area or one of the other markets we service, click the link in the description below to book an appointment with one of our technicians. Whether you simply need service or annual maintenance, because in addition to providing free estimates on system replacements, we also come out for free for all first-time customers just for giving us a try. And if you have any questions that you'd like us to answer, please post a comment in the comment section below. Although we are busy throughout the week installing and servicing air conditioners, we do read the comments and want to get Get back to you and make sure your questions are answered. And we also take the comments into account when creating content for you. And if you haven't checked it out already, watch this next video about the Daikin Fit and why it's one of our favorite air conditioners. And it also explains in practical and easy to understand terms how an inverter actually works. And we even show you one in action.